This is Froning and Friends, but there's no Froning. There's only Friends. <laughs> and, you know, cheers to that. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. Tasia Brusevich, <laughs> Haley Adams, and uh, Justin Medeiros, who's been visiting for the weekend. Really fun to have you around. Oh, yeah. It's been a good time. Yeah, it's been a really good time. Um, I'll make this awkward in a second and read an advertisement. But uh, before that, let's kind of like lay the, lay the framework. What, what are we doing here? What, what was this weekend all about? Just a training camp with a yeah. bunch of cool people. Really fit cool people so it's been a good time yeah yeah and i want to get your perspective on it because it was like you probably got a phone call and you're like what what is this what's this all about yeah i know it was like i like like two weeks ago just uh got, got an email and i was like dude that sounds like pretty awesome this bunch of people throwing down uh this is a good way to kind of like get myself back into training so i uh, just come out here for a couple days and just throw down with a bunch of people and have a good time so yeah it was pretty fun good good experience oh yeah cool um it ended with uh we were just looking at your video. I think that, that it deserves, uh, Captain John Murphy of the U S army deserves a little bit of a shout out because we all did a running workout and it was like, it was hard, Oh but, yeah. it, but it wasn't like crazy. Yeah. And then he sat in front of these top performers and did 50 calories per time on the assault bike. The echo bike. The echo oh. bike. Yeah. Echo Thank bike you. is, it is very, very different than the assault bike. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but tell me, give, give me just the, you can even show me, we'll, 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 we'll drop this in, in post-production, but, uh, oh, let me he sold out. Oh yeah, he sold out. Just yeah, he went, he, he, went, he went well. 49 seconds, but he goes and then he like debates to like if he wants to like walk it off. See, here's the exit. I yeah. don't agree with. <laughs> and this is where I, this is where I take issue. I'm like, I stay in the vehicle until I know it's safe to exit. Oh yeah. He went for I'm like I'm surprised a, he didn't just go down to the ground. Yeah. He walked away. I know. Yeah, it was like he was like going to go down. He's like, "No, no, no, no. I'm going to walk this out." And then he's like, "Oh wait, never mind. That wasn't a good idea." And I would pre- I'd prefer to tear my ACL on the way out. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to read this because uh, this, this episode is brought by Inside Tracker. Uh, today, more than ever, it's essential that we do the right thing to keep our bodies healthy. Inside Tracker is the ultra personalized nutrition platform that analyzes your blood, DNA, and lifestyle to help you optimize your body from the inside out, transform your body's data into meaningful insights, and a customized action plan with science backed recommendations you need to reach your goals. Uh, they got a cool deal. If you use the code Froning, you can take advantage of uh, $200 off the ultimate plan. So um, thanks to our friends at Inside Tracker. Um, I think we should get right into the fact that we've got the two youngest athletes who appeared at the CrossFit Games this year. And um, we get to spend a lot of hot time with Haley, but Justin, it's really cool to have you here. And um, thank you. I mean, not to keep it or not to make it too broad, but, uh, I really want to dig into your experience. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time with you right now, but, um, if you could like looking back, if you could encapsulate it, how was your experience at the CrossFit games? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was definitely a crazy year. I mean, everyone had their uh, experience of 2020, but, to, uh, uh, qualify for my first games, then kind of like not know if it's going to happen was definitely a kind of a weird experience and uh, like train for something that you're not 100% sure that's going to happen was, uh, was hard at times, but, um, just kind of had that faith that it's going to, uh, it's going to happen. I'm going to have my chance, uh, was like made training worth it and, uh, have stage one where I was like at my home gym, like my whole family, all my friends like there that got to see like all that work that came in, like that whole season, uh, was so awesome. Uh, I didn't really have any like major expectations going into stage one. I mean, honestly, I was just trying to get top 20. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't uh, really sure what was going to happen, but, uh, just go out every workout and give it my all and like throw down. And then at the end of the weekend to see top five and qualify for stage two was like, it was crazy to, uh, have like stage one, like with like so close with my friends and family, then go to stage two where you're at like the Mecca of CrossFit at, at the ranch and, and throwing down with like top five fittest males and females in the world was yeah. like super cool to have like those both like two experiences. Yeah. And we, here's what's interesting for me is like Haley was a boss in the teen uh, competition. Did you ever do it? Like, were you around for that? Yeah. So, uh, I actually, uh, tried twice. Um, I, uh, I volunteered for the games in 2015 uh-huh. and, uh, I didn't do the open that year cause, uh, I just didn't think I was like fit enough. And I like watched the teens go and, and they were all like phenomenal athletes. Like, uh, Anzo DeSeco was out there, Nick Paladino. Um, a lot of those guys, I was just kind of watching the male division and, uh, I was like, I mean, I think I could like, I think I could do that. Like that, like that looks awesome. So the next year I gave it a shot. I, uh, it was my last year in the teen division. And I think, uh, they only took top 10. I think I qualified or not qualified, but like I got like 17th, uh, in the open. So just missed, j- just, just missed it. it. And then, uh, that next year they took top 20. I was like, dang it. Like it's <laughs> so, so, so close, but, um, yeah, I definitely gave, uh, the teen division a shot. I did like, uh, granite games as a teenager. I did uh Wadapalooza twice as a teenager that. and yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, the last I was 17 
and like the the uh, age group for um, Wadapalooza is like 16 to 18 is the teenage division, like the oldest teenage division. I was 17 and then won it, and I was like so pumped. Like I like finally won it. the year before. I got like sixth place, and then I'm like go back and win it, and then like Haley's out here at like probably like 12 years old, like <laughs> <laughs> winning the teenage division of the 18 year old division. It was just like uh, it was crazy. I remember my coach at the time was just like, "Hey man, like like watch out for her." So yeah, uh, yeah it was pretty cool. I think you're like probably like 15 or something yeah, like that. So. Uh, uh yeah it was pretty crazy that was the first time i got to meet Haley. but uh yeah it was cool so this is this year surprising for you do you surprise yourself oh 100 well, percent. i mean uh we, we came in for the expectations here to qualify for the games but uh it was uh definitely um, an awesome surprise to uh get into the top five and, and let alone finish the season at a podium was not something that i expected but yeah. um I mean, uh, looking back at the season, like I know, like me and, and, and a huge part of it was just like, like my coach, like, uh, Adam, I just, I've only been working with him for a year and a half now and he's helped me so much just in all aspects. I mean, the five, like five months leading up to the games, I was living with him at his house in, in Washington and just, uh, like, I mean, he's been in the games 10 times, uh, on a team and he has so much experience and knowledge and just being in, in that community that he has is, uh, was definitely like definitely bumped me up to the next level and yeah. and he's bought into it just as much as I am. And I think that's the biggest part of it. I mean, he, he wants it just as bad as I do. Yeah. And I think that's important. Like a yeah. coach athlete relationship From being there. I totally can echo that. That's the truth. And like, even something that I saw was the handstand walk. Like if you want to talk about that, cause I saw you guys strategizing for that event specifically. And then you had this kind of crazy strategy yeah. that nobody <laughs> did, but I'll let you talk about it. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, uh, like I said, me and Adam have such a close relationship and, and I trust him with everything, but, uh, one of the things that like didn't irritate me. I mean, I'm comfortable with my strategy, but uh, like I feel pretty comfortable in my hands. Like uh, I feel like that's like a strong suit. So when a lot of people saw my strategy, which was uh, I handstand walked 20 yards and broken, and then I did five yard increments mm -hmm. uh, throughout the whole thing. And a lot of people took that as I'm bad at handstand walk. So I was trying to find a way around it. And it was more so that uh, me, me and Adam like to try to like outsmart Dave. So uh, <laughs> so we, we were uh, we we're trying to look at it. It was just uh, the only reason why it worked out that way was the standard. Um, was was different than and, and normally is normally you have to start with your hands behind the line but uh this uh, this year it was just your feet so you can kind of like lunge out uh yeah. in, in front of the line so what we did in the, in training like well maybe we'll do like five sets of 20 and then like we, we like did like a 120 yard and like oh we'll test out like like 10 10 10 and, and see that how that compares to 20 yards and we, we did that and then it was uh well, what was the, cause it, cause like the, the 10, 10 was faster than 20. Yeah. I was like, well, let's try five and five. And then the five, five was faster than the 10 yards. And we're like, well, well maybe we'll try this. <laughs> like, I don't know. I and mean, it was like right before the event, we, yeah. uh, we tried it out, but in order, like you kick down your feet are like right behind the line, then you just get a lunge forward again. So like yeah. technically you do that 20 times. I mean, you're only handstand walking 80 yards instead of a hundred. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Dave was definitely super pumped that uh, I did that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, it was fun hanging I, out with y'all at the games for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Coach. Yeah. No, it was super cool to get, get to meet you guys. Cause and that was another thing that was awesome about the games was that I think if it was, especially like me with my rookie year, I mean, a lot of the people, especially you have, I've been there like multiple times and have relationships with like all these top athletes. But with me, I really don't know anybody. So like going into the games and, and no offense to any of the athletes, but I would only see them in like the warm up area and like during the workout and you're not going to be talking to people around then. Yeah. But, uh, to go this year, we had so much downtime to like sit and talk and like really get to know everybody, which was super cool. Cause I know that wouldn't have happened if it was like a field of 40, 40, let alone 150, like it was the year before. Yeah. Well, do you tell me more about that? Like, is it, do you have time to kind of bro down? And, um, obviously I've had this year. Well, in, in years past, he's saying like, if there was more athletes, like, do you get a lot of social interaction or not so much? Is it tense? Is it, I would say definitely much less than this year. Like there was a very unique and like intimate environment of the small group of people because you were also not only you couldn't leave. So like everyone went together one place and then everyone left together to the other place. So like it was very unique and different than years past. So yeah. I would agree that that with the bigger group, especially when you have last or 2019, when we had like 150 male and yeah. I think 150 female and then all these teams, you know, you're not getting that. You're not really no. hanging out with people. Yeah, Cause usually when you finish an event at the regular games, you go back to your hotel, you don't, around anyone and this year like we were all in the same area because we couldn't leave so we finished an event go sit back in the area together so. yeah. yeah yeah and especially like like going to the ranch we had a 30 minute 
bus ride like <laughs> every day. So like, I mean, and they even separated us even more. I was like, we had a whole bus and it was just like five guys and the other <laughs> bus, it was a whole bus with five girls. But uh, yeah, we'd all sit together and just, yeah, no, I don't know about how your guys' yeah. bus was, but like, it was pretty cool to kind of like sit in the bus mm-hmm. and not everyone was like headphones on, like concentrated. Like we all got to sit and kind of talk to tell stories. So it was, yeah, uh, too. yeah, it was, it was really cool to kind of hear like from some of those guys and, yeah. uh, just kind of open up because a lot of those people, at least Matt and Noah, have been to the games like 2012. So yeah, yeah, no doubt. And uh, I'd love to hear you guys dig in a little bit on on strategy stuff too, right? Because it sounds like uh, well, you've probably run into Adam many a time. Yeah, Adam actually was great. So we like connected all four of us like right from the beginning. And Adam was like, "Hey, if there's anything like I hear that's gonna help you guys, I'll make sure I let you know." And nice. like vice versa. So we like bonded right yeah. from the yeah, start. Yeah. He's like, "Let's help these young guns." Like Adam, <laughs> like, "Yeah, totally, I'm in." Um, so you guys were like super helpful if you went before and they had any strategy, or if we went before and knew anything. You know, usually it was pretty quick, so there wasn't. It's like Watch a pact and survivor. Tell. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We, had like the we, we developed yeah. an alliance <laughs> yeah. for the last two, then we'll get yeah. down to yeah. it. But it was really cool too. Like Haley, she, we've talked about her. She got really sick on day one, <laughs> on day one night. And so like Adam and uh, Justin, they helped out and like got us some food and some things that like they Spaghetti. had access to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that we didn't. So like, that's really cool. Um, young lady, can we talk about that crazy shoe you're wearing or not yet? <laughs> <laughs> um sure <laughs> um okay so you got some kind of some kind of sad i mean i guess it depends on how you interpret it but you got some update on the uh the foot stuff you got going on yeah um i've torn my atfl completely and some other ligaments are messed up so so what does that look like now in terms of your trajectory between i guess now in the open and oh, i'll be i'll be fine by the open it's just there's a some different routes I can go on right now just to make sure it's healthy for the game season because open obviously isn't that important like I just gotta slide by like I usually do yeah (laughs) same as me it's more of like top 20 slide by no like I usually (laughs) just always barely get in by the open but it looks a little bit different this year so it looks like you can't qualify straight through the open which is nice um so it's just picking the best route to make sure that I'm 100% for the games, which mm-hmm. I'm sure I will be, but just being smart now and figuring it out. Cool. Sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, if there's a time to do anything, it's it's now. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how's the mental side of it? You feeling, feeling good? Feeling disappointed? Um, feeling I all the I'm above? I just like a little sad now because I just kept putting it off like, oh, it's fine, it's fine, and it wasn't getting better. So now that I know that something is wrong with it, it's a little bit, refreshing but also i'm a little sad you know because i've never been hurt before but i know i'm in good hands and that i'll be okay yeah good yeah. good um your body hold up pretty well it's funny like most most young people are like bomb proof but um having been in the crossfit space for a really long time I'd, i had told myself that like you know you really need to ramp up slow you need to get to a certain maturity and from there you need to still need to be careful it's probably why I'm not a champion athlete, but um, I was always thinking like these kids who are starting so young. I mean, you must have started CrossFit when you were 10, 12, 12, 12 yeah. years old. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't Jeez. doing it like, uh, like crazy, which I think worked out for the better. I think it's important to still do like as you're young, do as many sports as you mm-hmm. can. And that's what I did when I was young. And uh, I was in seventh grade when I first started. So I was either 12 or 13, but um, cause uh, I was born in 99, but uh, yeah, I started, I was doing wrestling and football. So that takes up like the majority of the year. Those are my sports. And I use CrossFit to kind of help me train for those sports. So I was really only doing it during the summertime or on, on Saturdays. Uh, m- my mom and my sister were the one that like got me into it. So uh, I was super competitive at the time and I still am, but uh, yeah. They, yeah, they're just like telling me like what they were doing. I was wrestling with the high school team at the time. They're telling me to go into like the weight room for like two hours and my mom comes back. She's like, oh yeah, we're there for an hour. We warmed up. We did like a 10 minute workout, cooled down. That was it. I'm like, you got to work out in 10 minutes. Like, there's no <laughs> way. Like, you can't do that. So uh, it, it, they wrote me into it and uh, just did it as much as I could. And after my sophomore year, I quit football to focus on wrestling, but obviously opened up more time to uh, do CrossFit. And then uh, the cars didn't play out to wrestle in college. And uh, obviously I just, everything happens for a reason, I think, and just focused on uh, CrossFit since yeah. then for the past three years. Yeah. I love, um, I've talked to Haley about it before, but I love to, to bring it up with both of you because it trips me out. So you were born in the year 1999, which yes. means the year of the first CrossFit Games, you were eight years old. Yeah. And so at what point was it when you decided you weren't going to do college sports or you know, at what point did you kind of become a fan? And then at what point did you decide, man, I'm going to do this. I wanted, I would love for both of you guys to answer that. I want to go first. Sure. Um, I played sports my whole life. So I was basically done with everything when I started CrossFit. Um, 
I forgot the question. <laughs> like, uh, well, first, first was <laughs> when did you become a fan? Okay, actually, I kind of skipped that phase. I remember the games <laughs> came on. <laughs> Obviously, I like was a fan girl, but also I wanted to make it to the games as a teenager. So it wasn't just like, oh, like I'm just yeah. super into the CrossFit games. Like I wanted to compete there as a teenager. So I guess I kind of skipped that. I don't, I don't mean like like puppy dog eyes and like oh these you know necessarily oh, these people well, are my heroes, but like when we were like wow this sport's kind of yeah, cool. I started like, in 2015. Um, and I remember watching the games like on the TV. So yeah, that was cool. But and then you're in it basically right after that. Sense, yeah, I was still doing gymnastics and cross country at the same time for a little bit and trying to balance all of it, and then quit gymnastics. And then after my cross country season ended, then went swimming and then went full time cross. And uh, you're how old? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Okay, Close so you did gymnastics time. until like a later age. Yeah. So you probably got some good tricks. Yeah. No. <laughs> no? Not anymore. I was not very good at it. <laughs> I, was very, I was too tall. All right, give me your timeline. Like when did it when did it first catch your eye? I guess you said your parents were into it. Yeah, I so said my parents were into it. Uh, I started in 2012. That's when like the gym opened up in uh, in my uh, my town, or at least the one that we went to. Uh, opened up in 2012, and then uh, I think like 2014 is when I started like kind of pay, paying attention to it. That was when like Rich won his fourth, and uh, was like starting to get pretty big. I mean, so I, network I, I, television, I kinda like, it was easy to watch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you kind of start hearing about it more. And then, uh, I volunteered in 2015 and, uh, got to like see it firsthand, which was, uh, was, was pretty cool. And that's what kind of games. Yeah. At the games. So what was your job at the games in 2015, your volunteer position? Yeah. I was kind of in the back. Uh, I wasn't like with rogue, but I was kind of, uh, helping out, um, rogue, just kind of like, lo- like loading barbells, like get- getting them set, move- moving equipment, just kind of all like, uh, like, uh, uh kind of all under, but, uh, it-, it was pretty cool. I mean, just, uh, see those guys firsthand. I mean, I thought like, obviously seeing on TV, I didn't really pay attention too much. And I was only like 15 years old. So I wasn't the brightest kid, but uh, <laughs> I thought Jason Klepa was like six, two, like two twenty. Like yeah. I thought these yeah. guys were yeah. like massive individuals. And I remember like getting there and like Jason Klepa was only a couple inches than me. I remember like hopping in an elevator with rich. I mean, he has no idea that happened, but like, yeah. I remember like seeing it. I'm like, these guys aren't like, I thought these like are giants yeah. out there, but um, it was like pretty cool to like see that. I mean, they're still like phenomenal athletes and all that, but to see that like in person, like definitely like fired me up and got me into it. Yeah. And then um, I was a pretty competitive wrestler uh, up until my senior year. I had a couple offers to wrestle like uh, in a collegiate level, but um, like n- nothing crazy like D2 schools, but um, I was getting pretty burnt out and then wasn't going to pick a school for wrestling. So mm-hmm. I picked Boise State because I really like... Uh, just the school and, the, and where it's at. And then uh, I talked to the coach and he said, I had a spot on the team, try out. About a week before practice started, they uh, they cut the program. Wow. So uh, I was like, well, I mean, like I said, everything happens for a reason. So I just kind of dove in a CrossFit from there. Yeah. Um, I was never going to like not do CrossFit, but uh, it allowed me to like fully focus on it. Yeah, so, there's um, a difference between doing it as your sport and as something that supplements your sport. So. Yeah, so in like 20, I graduated high school in 2017. And then uh, that like started that uh, that year was uh, when I fully like devoted to CrossFit. Man. And yeah. so, so Boise is technically home for now, or at least now it's, you're, it's where you go to school, but you've, yeah. during, since it's a COVID year, you've basically been living remotely in yeah. Fort Vancouver. Yeah. I've been bouncing all over. I mean, I, my home base is California. That's where I grew up. Uh, I went to Boise state for a while, then kind of COVID happened. So, uh, uh, that's a family stuff that happened. I went back home. So I was there for a while. I was able to do school online, which was uh, super nice. And then, uh, got, got to travel and see my coach and, and stay there kind of for a training camp. Man, it's fun. Yeah. And it's really fun. Um, I don't know that many people who are watching know Like you were telling us about some of your hobbies last night. I found, oh, them, yeah. re- I found them very interesting, <laughs> yeah. especially, mm, especially because you're in NorCal. Like you yep. got, you got a lot of country in you for somebody who's from NorCal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people have a, a, a different um, view of what California is. My, my view of California, what someone else is, is a little bit different. I think we're kind of like all beach boys and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, I grew up kind of in a smaller town. Uh, I live in like five acres, nothing crazy, but uh, kind of grew up like, like hunting, riding dirt bikes and, and, and all that stuff. So uh, I just like to try new things and get as much as like exposure as I can. But yeah. Um, yeah, I got, I got into uh, bow hunting uh, a while ago. I grew up always like rifle hunting, shooting shotguns, rifles, uh, and stuff like that. But uh, someone gave me a boat. It's like a 15 foot like flat bottom aluminum boat, and it's. And sat- we'll have to like again, like we'll have to put a picture up of this thing. But when he says somebody gave it to him, he showed us a picture, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, you mean like they, it was in a dump?" And <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's no. like you salvaged this boat yeah. from someone's yard. <laughs> okay, so so the maybe boat- you didn't even tell them that you took it. You yeah, just, yeah, like- I know. Like the, the last time they registered with the boat was like 2003. And it was running, but they just like parked it outside with no cover 
oh from 2003 goodness. to like 2019. <laughs> so like, it was a pretty beat up boat. It was but, a flower pot. At that yeah. Point, yeah. 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 But it's aluminum. It doesn't yeah. rust. So like the body was good. So like I got it. Uh, I had a lot of people help me out, but we built it up, built like a tower on it wow. uh, on the front. And I uh, started getting a bow fishing. Cool. Which is like, have you seen that? No, but uh, that's like shooting a bow into the water. Yes. And then you got a reel I've on your bow. I've never heard of it. Yes. What? Yes. It, dude, is, it, it is so cool. And uh, like you can do it during the day, but like nighttime is the time to do it. And uh, uh, in California, all you can do is for carp. Um, okay. And then uh, kind of like out here, I know there's like alligator gar and stuff like that. So you can do it for alligator gar too. But in California, it's just carp. And uh, you go out and you have like lights all around like the tower so that you're time. on. Yeah, at nighttime okay. you, is, is like kind of the best time during the summer yeah. uh, months. And the carp like come up into like the shallow water into the tulies. And you kind of like see their backs and stuff. But you have the lights all out. So yeah. you go, you're sitting in the front of like of the tower when you see them. You shoot them. There's a string tied to your arrow. What? Hits it. And it like, is so savage. That's I, crazy. I love yeah. everything about it. And, and like carp are like pretty big fish. Like you yeah. can get like like 30, like 30 yeah. pound carp. So uh, it's so fun. And they're a strong fish. So they don't die like when you shoot it. Yeah. So then like they take off. You see like your arrow like sticking up in the water. The fish takes off. You reel it in. Like it's a blast. Do you feel like it's easy because the like they don't know what's happening? Like it's easy to hit them or no? It's it's, it's like it's like riding a bike. Okay. So like what, what's uh like kind of hard. So like uh. There's like re the reflection of the yeah. water. So if like the, the deeper the fish is, yeah. the more off it is. So it's like uh. when it's there, on the top of the water, you shoot right at them. But as they get deeper, it's like an illusion. So, oh, so yeah. you, you like think they're higher than they are. So you always miss high. But once you kind of like figure out that like depth perception, it's that's uh, interesting. not everything that's fun has to be hard, Tisha. Well, I was All just right? like curious because he's like, oh yeah, just the fish swim up to the light and I just shoot it. And I'm like, they okay. wait there and look at you. Yeah, yeah, well, like, thing, hey. well, the thing that's cool is like on, on the bow, there's no sights or anything oh, like there's, yeah. there's no room for him so it's all like by feel so like you kind of feel that position you kind of yeah kind of figure it out that's but, really uh, cool and yeah, he's working fun. towards were you is it somebody that you knew you were telling me about the bear story oh yeah it, it, not someone i know but uh i follow this guy on uh, uh instagram oh, okay, okay okay but uh, he's a big bow hunter but he shot a he got a bear with a spear say that again a bear with a spear yes like, like meaning he, he got, like threw it <laughs> yes like threw it like caveman status and it's alive think about yeah, the ramifications of that yeah, just like he said, like the video is like him like standing there and then like he's just like super still, like kind of like in the bushes, like the bear like comes up, it's not moving, so the bear's not looking, just freaking hammer. Does he have it. a background oh in like baseball? God. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the dude, do the, the dude <laughs> for, <laughs> for mental health issues? <laughs> like, yeah, it's such a bad idea. Yeah, yeah I think his uh, Instagram's like Bomar Hunting or That's something crazy. like that. That's crazy. But dude, it's, the guy's insane. That would be the goal is to get... Um, selfishly get like <laughs> our crew on there but like get you with that guy and go go throw a spear yes. to bear yes yes <laughs> and i'll have a video camera and a drone or something <laughs> yeah but if it doesn't die instantly away. it just turns around and comes eat Dude, you, you can <laughs> shoot a bear with a gun and not kill it and it'll turn around and come get you you know what i mean so like yes. it's just like i'm gonna go out with a spear yeah, yeah. heck no. no that's a hard no for me that's a no dog <laughs> um all right cool i mean we wanted to keep this one intentionally short but i would love again to hear from both of you guys um being as young as you are um, and I get, uh, I probably, Haley probably gets annoyed with these questions cause I ask them a lot, but, um, takeaways from the games, uh, for your confidence, right? Like you said, you surprised yourself, uh, maybe even surprised to be there. So was there one moment where you're like, yeah, man, I, I belong here. Or was there one, was there a key takeaway or was there something that after the weekend you were like, man, that, that makes me feel like this could be my jam. Yeah. I mean, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, I'd be sat down and, and, and I'm just Adam, my coach has helped me so much, but like kind of sit and debrief and talk to him about the weekend and especially to have him there to experience it like with him. But, uh, we talked a lot after the games, we, we, we drove, so we had like a car ride together and he stayed nice. an extra day. But, uh, just, uh, I think the biggest thing for me was like knowing that like when I give like my full effort, like it's enough to compete with the best. And I think that was, uh, a very like reassuring like thing for me. Cause I mean, every day I'm giving my full effort in the gym, but, uh, I'm not training with games athletes every day. So like, I, I don't really know where I lie on the spectrum, but, uh, to, to put in all that hard work all season and then, uh, to come out and, and on, on the podium at the end of the year was uh, pretty crazy. And just to know that like when I am giving my maximum effort, like that's going to be enough to, to, to compete with the best. Yeah. You are competing with some of the best on yeah. a semi-consistent basis. Yeah, butt kicked all the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've always gone back and forth of, do I belong there? Was it just luck? Like, especially after the 2019 games when everyone just had something to say. So just this year was super reassuring, and I feel like I'm never going to second-guess myself again, and I'm not scared to say, like, oh, I want to be on the podium next year. Like, I remember when we did that interview, I was like, wouldn't say anything. Yep. Like, 
before the, stage one. This is the pre games, like, and she was like, yeah, I want to say that. People look dumb when they say before that. Before stage yeah. one, I was like, I'm not saying I want to get top five. Like, I don't want to embarrass myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. So I'm not like scared to say that anymore. And also, I learned that I can literally do anything. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> 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 when I'm really hurt or whatever. But yeah. it proved to me a lot that, like, your mind is a crazy tool and so is adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, knowing what was actually wrong with your foot, knowing yeah. that you got sick on Friday, like that, that's got to kind of, it was insane. I mean, like we said, like we kind of hooked up in the beginning yeah. and she's like, don't tell anybody, but look at this. And like, she showed me a picture of her foot. I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, that's crazy. Like I'm, I'm not never, a doctor, I, but I, that I, looks bad. That looks, yeah. that looks bad. I was like, I'm, I was like, I could yeah. never complain about a rolled ankle again. Like I rolled my uh, like ankle like on the trail run. I'm like, this is nothing compared to like Haley. Like I can't even complain about this. You're like poor Haley, she's back <laughs> yeah. there running. I know, I know. Like poor Haley. Like, uh, uh, but yeah, she's a uh, yeah, she's an animal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How old were you when you first competed as an individual? Um, 26. Okay, so old compared to these guys. Well, crazy, right? But that was the standard for a long time. Yeah. It was like that was the actually I think the average age like in the early days was more like 28, 29, 30. Yeah. And so it's come down, come down, come down. They're just getting younger and younger. Getting younger. We're and getting younger. older and older. Oh, bro, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that ship has sailed. But um, I don't know. Is there any kind of like wise part of you that um, has, I don't know, insights, advice, or what do you think about when you see these <laughs> nineteen and twenty year olds? Well, I mean, they clearly it. have the grit. Like so that's something I've seen from Haley, which has been incredible to watch this year. Just like as far as just going out and being gritty and showing up and not being afraid of like the hard workouts and you clearly have it too, like pushing the pace with Matt and doing all those things. That's really cool. Um, and then just now seeing, you know, obviously there's no regrets of you going competing on your ankle. We talked about that, but now going forward, like trying to take care of the body and make sure you're healthy so that you can have a career that's 10 years or however long you want. So just being, you're young, right? And you think you're invincible and you're not. So <laughs> trying to be smart in those little things. Yeah, and as sure. you can grow through that and all those adversities are only going to make yeah, you better. I'm thankful to have like you and Rich and the crew, like, cause you guys have been through that stuff. So yeah. like Haley, stop. <laughs> yeah right we had to like slow her Stop. down which is probably the same for you it's like okay maybe that was enough we'll chill from this moment you know We're that's like my wisdom <laughs> yeah. i used my nine lives in different ways when i was when i was the same age but it's true like yeah you get less and less bomb proof but um you guys are in it right now man I'm, I'm, it's really fun to see how like at the early stages of your career um you guys are doing so so well um i not don't think I'm speaking out of turn to say you're the youngest athletes to do as well as you have done. I know it on the female side for a fact. Um, and on the male side, I can't think of anybody who has done, uh, well, certainly not podium, you know, at such an early age. So congratulations, man. It's yeah, really cool you. to have you here. Um, any kind of takeaways from the weekend, anything that stood out or any bright spots? That you no, it was, I mean, it was, it was just, yeah, no, it was just so cool just like to be around like, like all, all these athletes. I mean, it is kind of the off season, but like, just still to go out there and kind of throw down. I mean, I know like some of the workouts I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going to go out hot. Like, I, I want to see, I want to see what oh, everyone yeah, else we does. Noticed yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know R R Rich was watching me, but, uh, yeah. Uh, me and my partner, Tyler, were just like, uh, it was like one of the workouts. It was like a four minute AMRAP. It was like eight, uh, dumbbell snatches, uh, at a hundred pounds, then eight strict handstand pushups. And I'm like, I'm going to go out and do touch and go. <laughs> so, uh, did, How'd that end up? uh, probably not the best, yeah. but, uh, like, uh, I did definitely think, I mean, it's training, it's off season. I came out here to have a good time and, uh, yeah. and, and kind of push myself. I mean, uh, no one knows what's going to happen when you come out and do eight, but, uh, it was, it was just pretty fun to kind of do that this weekend, still push hard, like throw down and just kind of uh, have fun with it. I mean, Mur Murph doing 50 cows to end the weekend, yeah. just like we were all out here, like throwing down, going hard, having a good time. Yeah. So it was a, it was a blast. This is the best crew to do that with. Oh Yeah how oh, yeah. uh, knowing you how hard is it to be hurt like how hard is it to not jump in and, and brawl um it sucks but like you said what better time for it to happen than now and feel like fix myself because if i'm hurting myself more right now then i know i'm not going to be ready and meet my goals next year so i gotta take care of myself yep yes for you sure. do yes you do um thank you guys this is fun this was yeah, fun was this awesome. was, and this thing was like a record time podcast as well so Boom. um we hope that you come back and visit us, man. Yeah. Like anytime, yeah, no, good time. Doors open. Season. Yeah. I know, I know. I'll yeah. definitely have to make a trip back up here. Uh, awesome. Okay, brother. Um, well, that's a wrap. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. Nice. Thanks.